Okay, so in this video, we will be using Python to get uh, geolocation um, for an, a specific IP address. So the first tool that we'll be using is called IP2GeoTools. Um, this one is very quick and easy to use, very simple to implement, and also has a free version. The second one that we'll be using is called GEOIP2. Uh, this one also has a, a free downloadable um, database from MaxMind. Uh, that we'll be uh, using. Okay, so I have an empty folder set up here. So the first thing we need to do is install the uh, library. However, I'm using uh, pip env. If you're not familiar with pip env, there's a link in the description to how I have it set up. Okay, so the package should be installed. I'll go ahead and clear my terminal. And there are a number of subdependencies. Um, so we only installed one package here and it, it just grabbed all these. What these are, these are different uh, providers that you can use. So there's MaxMind, there's IP2 location. There's a few more. Also, you notice that request is um, also being installed. So what happens is every time you call this API, as we will uh, soon demonstrate, you're actually making an HTTP request under the hood. So you wanna keep that in mind because if you have too many at, uh, requests at once, you might get throttled or it might just be um, added latency. So that's the one disadvantage of this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. Okay, switching to the editor here. So what we need to do is import the library. So on ip 2 geotoolsdatabasesnoncommercial and we want the uh, DB IP city class. So I'm going to create a new variable here called IP location. And we want to call the get method. And the first um, thing that we're going to pass in is the actual IP address. And there's a second parameter um, that, that which is the API key. Since we're using the free version, we'll just pass in free. Okay, so once we get a result back, there's a number of properties that um, we have. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, paste those in. Okay, one thing to note here is that um, this library will actually return a latitude and longitude, which the other one will not. So if that's something that uh, you need, I mean, it might save you having to do some um, geo, other geocode lookup for that. Okay, so I'm outside of the shell. Since I'm using Pippi and V, you have to go into, inside the shell. Okay, so now we have our result back. Um, so we have uh, country, region, city. So it's someplace in Hawaii, along with the latitude and longitude. And that's really all you need to implement this. Um, like I said, there's a number of different providers. So if you want to upgrade in the future, um, you can upgrade to one of the commercial ones. Um, it's, it's a paid service, but it's gonna give you more accurate information um, and it's gonna be more up to date. And another benefit of this whole approach is that there's uh, very minimal code changes that you would have to do to upgrade. Okay, so for the GEOIP2 implementation, um, what we want is uh, this free geolocation data. Now there are two different um, things that this can provide. Um, so there's one, it could be a paid web service, or if you download the um, MaxMind database file, um, you can just use it locally. So this uh, URL does change periodically. Um, so you could probably find it just by Googling Geolite 2 free location, free geolocation data. And before you used to be able to just go straight to the downloads page and uh, download the file. Um, now you do have to go through this um, sign up process. So if you click here, um, you have to fill out this form uh, with your email. And then what they do is they send you an email verification, and then you'll be able to set your password, um, log in, and then be able to access the uh, database. Um, so the download databases page, um, once you're logged in, um, what you wanna do is uh, scroll down, you should see Geo2 Light, Geo Light 2 City, and then download this uh, gzip file. Okay, switching back to our terminal here. Once you have that file downloaded, um, what I'm gonna do in here is just uh, create a new uh, directory called db. 
and I'll go ahead and CD into it. And so what we want to do is copy uh, the file we downloaded. And let's go ahead and copy it to here. So if I so if I look at the file, um, so what we have is this um, zip file here. So in order to unarchive this, we'll just use the tar command. And then we need to pass in some parameters. So x, uh, v, cf, and then our file name. So that extracted a few files. So if I do a listing on this, um, so we have a, this right here is a folder. Um, so we'll just uh, list those files out. And the file that we're interested in is this geolite2-city.mmdb. This is the actual database right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. Call this geoip 2 demo and then so we need to import the uh, database or the library. Okay, so we're gonna create a new variable called reader. So we want geoip2.database.reader, um, this is the uh, reader object. So the first thing we need to do is pass in our, pass in our path to the uh, database. So we have this folder here and then um, geo to light city dot mmdb I'm gonna create a new variable called response. So we want reader dot city. And then I'm gonna use that same IP from the previous example for the um, uh, IP2 geo tools. Okay, and just like the previous example, there's a number of properties that we will get back from our response, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste those in. And then after that, we wanna just close our reader. Okay, so scrolling back up, um, what they so they do return us um, actual standardized ISO codes, um, like US, for example, which is good. And this is a little bit odd here. Um, so in order to get like the state name, you have to go response dot subdivisions, um, most specific dot name um, to get the state code. The state has its own ISO code. Um, so we have to use uh, the subdivisions um, object for that also. And then um, response uh, dot city. So city and um, postal code, those are a little bit more straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and then switch back to the terminal to run it. Okay, and then there's our result. Um, just as it was highlighted in the comments, um, it made look made that check inside the database, uh, a local file, and then um, printed out the result. So this approach might be a better option for you if downloading the um, database and especially if you have to make a ton of requests in a short amount of time this is probably the best way to go it's going to be the fastest and you don't have to worry about uh, latency and throttling and other issues like that